Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Pain. And welcome to Let's Learn C. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or examples. Make sure to have annotations turned on so you can see all the updates I make to these videos. I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whatever you like. Eclipse, QT Creator, whatever you choose. Today's focus will be on for and while loops, which builds heavily on previous lessons. So check out those if you're unfamiliar with a topic. If this is your first programming language, I'd strongly recommend checking out my Let's Learn Python series, which teaches you the fundamentals of programming. All you need are the basics and object-oriented programming series, link to the right, and you'll be well prepared for this C++ series. All right, so what is a loop? A loop is a slang term from the street for the popular and sweet cereal Fruit Loops. It is often traded as one of the most popular consumable drugs out there. When you ingest it, your heart beats faster, your pupils dilate, and you get a burst of energy. When someone asks you if you want some loops, he's asking you if you'd like to partake in a bowl of delicious breakfast food. Always say yes. <laughs> okay, enough joking around. Loops are a way to repeat a certain set of operations several times over. The loops we use in Python are the same loops we're going to be using in C++. Before I start teaching you each of the loops though, I do want to tell you and emphasize that there are very often algorithms built into the standard library that will do what loops do much better and more efficiently. For instance, in Python, if you want to find an item in a list, we do that by creating a loop that has a simple condition within it to check every item within the list. In C++, however, there is a find function in the algorithm module that we can use for searching through and finding an item in a collection. Any kind of item collection could be an array, a vector, a queue, a stack, anything. So because of this, it's kind of bad form to use loops in your code because there's often a better, simpler function out there that does exactly what you're looking for and much more efficiently. But I will teach you this because loops are still important and you will still use them, just far less frequently than you think. I'm also emphasizing this greatly because it is noted in the C++ core guidelines right here. These guidelines were developed in the last year or so by the community and the father of C++ as recommendations for better C++ programming. I will be teaching many of its important points in these tutorials as it will help bring your skills to that of a professional much quicker. Oh, and the website that I'm using here is isocpp.github.io slash C++ core guidelines slash C++ core guidelines, which you'll link over here to the right and in the description below. Now let's get back to the topic of loops. All right, so before we begin, here is our default code that we've included in all our previous lessons, which is just the include IO stream, include string using namespace standard, uh, our main function with a simple get line to stop it from closing out. And just the return zero and we're done. So let's go ahead and paste in some code right now. So the while loop starts with the keyword while, just like in Python and then is followed by an expression in clothes in parentheses, just like our if statement in the previous lesson. After that is a pair of curly braces enclosing the block of code we wish to perform. The braces are optional if it's only a single line of code you wish to perform, as we see in this example. So here we have our uh, initialization of x, which is going to be our condition to break the loop. And while is always true as long as it is a number. So as long as it doesn't hit zero, we're going to be outputting the value of x and then decrementing it with the double minus sign there. So if we run our code, it should count from five downward to one. Here we go. And that's exactly what we get. Uh, we don't get zero because the condition is zero. And so it doesn't actually output and it breaks the loop. And then we just end with our git line and the program is finished. And so we can press enter to finish it out. Cool. And just as before with the if statement, if there is a single line in the while loop, then it is automatically adding in the curly braces around this single statement. 
So we don't need to worry about that. If it's multi-line, however, we do need to include the curly braces at the beginning and end of our block of code. Cool. So when do we use while loops? We use while loops if it is unclear how many times we will be looping or if there is no obvious loop variable. Let me repeat that to really cement it in. We use while loops if it is unclear how many times we're going to be looping or if there is no obvious loop variable. All right, an example of that would be, while there is rice in my rice bag, I will grab a handful and hurl it as hard as I can at the bride and groom. All right, so that's a while loop. Is there any other loops that we should know about? There is another. There is a do while loop. And a do while loop is just a while loop that will perform the loop at least once. A basic while loop may not execute its code at all if the argument expression within the parentheses is false. A do while loop ensures that it will occur at least once. All right, so let's look at a very simple do while loop. And I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this while loop code here and paste in the do while loop, okay? And notice that we are just keeping our int x is equal to five. And so this says, I want to do a C out once, and then if the co condition of while is still true, then it will execute this line again following the do. Typically, you will see the curly braces in closing after the do keyword and before the while keyword, which is very odd. It's mixing up what we've done before. This is the format of the do while loop. Very weird. And let's go ahead and run that code, and it should just give us the exact same output as the previous. And again, we see five, four, three, two, one, counting down, no zero. If we did start this loop at zero, I'll change that to zero so you can see exactly what it's doing. You'll note that it actually starts at zero and outputs there and executes it. And so therefore the condition of uh, it is never met again. So we can just close this out and kill the program because it's gonna continue on forever. Okay. So again, the format is strange in that the keyword do comes before the block of code that is to be looped. And the keyword while and the condition of the loop follows it and must end with a semicolon. So right here, after we see while and the argument, it ends with a semicolon. Our last loop did not, however, have a semicolon at the end. That's very important to note. If we actually delete it, we'll notice that all of our code below starts getting underlined as there, are, there is a major compile error. So we add that back in and it fixes it for us. It is never recommended to use a do while loop as they are not very easy to read and very error prone. As you can tell right here, this is just not logical to read here. So do this once and then while this condition's met, go back and reread this part. It's just silly. It's absolutely silly. So would not recommend ever using do while loops, but they're there for you if you want them. The third type of loop is the for loop. It starts with the keyword for, just like in Python, and then it has an argument or expression area enclosed by parentheses, just like our if statements. In this expression, uh, it is actually separated into three parts by two semicolons in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in a simple for loop right here in place of all this code. The first part is the init or the initialization where we can optionally create or set variables at a starting point. The second part is the condition to break the loop itself. And the third and final part is the amount we step or increment by. This can be an increasing or decreasing amount. None of these guys, however, are required to be in here for this for loop to work. In fact, we could t pull that out and the only parts that are absolutely necessary in this for loop argument is just these semicolons se separating out each of these statements. And now I'm gonna paste in some code here that's gonna look very odd. And now we have our init function, our initialization of the variable outside of the for loop before it begins. And then here we have a simple C out statement, just as we did before. And now we've moved the increment um, over to this line just as we saw in the while example. And then finally, we have a condition to actually break that loop. It's worth noting that both keywords break and continue work just as they did in Python. So break here will stop the loop. If we wanted to, we could do if i is 
equal to five, then we can do continue. It won't actually print out five, I believe. It won't print five or six. <laughs> I don't know, let's test it out and see what it does. Oh, and I forgot to move that to before the actual C out statement. So now it won't actually print it. Oh, so it's, it's looping infinitely now. Uh, I actually did not double check this, but I should have included an II. This continue would work if we had actually formatted this correctly, but because I was doing an on-the-spot demo, <laughs> I screwed it up, whatever. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. So if we wanted to do this right, we would actually do this here, and then uh, let's uh, right below that uh, continue, we're going to go I++ plus plus, so we can actually stop the loop from looping forever. In that with a semicolon, save it, and now it should actually loop. Um, all right, so there we go, test it out, and now we should skip five, just as we, <laughs> I intended to. There we go, that worked out a lot better, right guys? <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so yeah, continue works just as before, and break works just as before in Python. Um, break stops the loop altogether, and continue says skip over this current iteration of the loop. Okay, so we use for loops. If it is known how many times we'll be looping, or if there is an obvious loop variable. Let me repeat that. We use a for loop if it is known how many times we will be looping, or if there is an obvious loop variable. An example of a for loop would be, for each child in the mall, make an ugly face at him or her. If they cry, all the better. <laughs> all right, I'm just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> so then we have nested loops. Nested loops simply are loops within loops. And I'll show you that with the for loop. Go ahead and paste that in here. And now I'll slide this over left so you can see what's going on right here. All right, you should be able to see everything here. Um, so it just says uh, four int tens, and we're gonna be counting up by tens, like right here. We're going to print out the tens value, and then we have a loop within that that's gonna be the ones. And here I am just adding the ones and tens and outputting them. So theoretically, it should count from zero to 100 by counting the ones and tens and adding them together. So let's go ahead and run the code and see what it prints out. And here we have just that. We have the tens value starting at zero and then counting up to zero to nine. And then we're at 10 and then we see out 10 to 19 and so on and so forth, all the way down up to 99. Once it hits 100, then the tens value uh, stops the loop and we exit the loop altogether, the master loop. And that's pretty much all there is to nested loops. In the previous tutorial, we could have also created a nested if or a nested else if or even a nested switch statement if we so desired um, because they are all types of control. I just forgot to. Please forgive me. <laughs> Final note, there is also a keyword called go to that works similarly to a loop by using labels and weirdness. I'm not teaching it because it's old technology, it's confusing to read, and it's not user friendly. Also, it's to be avoided because that's what the guidelines say. So go to should be avoided. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely try these coding challenges shown here and the debug challenges linked below in the description. You are a brilliant programmer and I'm sure you can do it if you set your mind to it. I'll be posting solutions for all of these problems after groups of tutorials, but I really want you to develop your own skills and solutions. There's often many correct answers. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all. And also check out the comments below if you're having problems. Lastly, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Hit that like button to show some love and support me on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive. <laughs>